Hey guys, welcome to Most Craved. I'm Jenna Bush with Legion of Leia. I'm Silas Lesnick with ComingSoon.net. I'm the heavily injured William Bibiani of Crave Online, and we are here with the inimitable Jonathan Levine. Hey. Hey. <laughs> are, you are you framed out? Is your, is your leg can you, in? Can you, can, can you see this audience? Yeah. Yeah, you like that, don't you? That's knee surgery right there. <laughs> but more importantly, this guy directed the night before uh, a really, really funny new comedy. Thank you. With Seth Rogen, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Anthony Mackie. Uh, what's that like? Uh, <laughs> wow. It's a good question. I'm, I'm glad you asked. Um, it was really, really fun. I mean, yeah. it was great to reunite with those guys, with Seth and, and Joe. And Because you did 50-50 uh, with them. Because we did 50-50 with them. And not just them, like Evan Goldberg, um, Kyle Hunter, Ariel Shafir, who also who were associate producers on 50-50 and who co-wrote this movie with me. Um, it was just like a, a family reunion. And uh, we all kind of came together over our love of holiday movies. And it was really nice, because 50-50 was such a great movie to make. Uh, but it, you know, it had the cancer thing kind of hanging over it, which was, which was, um, which made it, you know, serious. Yeah. This movie um, was really fun to just like take Joe and let Joe dance, let Joe sing. You know what I mean? It was like it was like stuff that we couldn't do in fifty fifty because it was too intense. So this is an apology to Joe. Like, sorry about having to shave your head. Now you can do Run DMC. Um, yeah, he made me, as right before he was shaving his head, he was like, I better get to do Run DMC in a movie. Respect. Yeah, it was kind of a weird, I thought it was a weird request at the time, but then it all made sense. It all paid off. Yeah. It seems like one of the neat things about the movie is it, it hits uh, a number of different, like, Christmas movie classics. Yeah, and yeah. Did you just sit down and make a list as... I mean, that's like, I kind of really love Christmas movies, so I didn't really need to make a list. I just have seen so many of them and have such an abiding love of them. Um, but I did sit down and rewatch a lot of stuff. Home what did you rewatch? I watched Home Alone 2, which is awesome. Well, it's the New York one. <laughs> it's the New York one. Toss Boy one. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. really good. Um, what else did I? I watched The Family Man, very good movie, Brett Ratner's best mm. film. That's probably fair. Yeah. I'd say that. Yeah. yeah. You know what I really I really liked about this film is that often with comedies like this, the women in it are, you know, questionable. Right. They were fantastic in this. They, they were wonderful and it's and, and, and we can take no credit. The writers can take no credit for that. Um the the great thing is <laughs> um well we you have four dudes writing and we try to write women, but I, I think that, you know, having people like Mindy and Lizzie and Alana and and Jillian, like all of whom can write. You know, and all of whom were improvising kind of their best moments. And you know, I, the only thing I can take credit for is just letting them do that. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Because they're because they're wonderful and and they're great. No, I mean we 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 knew we didn't want it to become this kind of douchey bro fest, and so they helped us mitigate that. Well, it fits very neatly into I don't know what would you call it? like the bromance genre? Isn't that it's kind of where a lot of comedy is right now? Yeah, I mean I think it. You know, to me it's yes, it certainly fits into that genre and. Um, you know, for me, the holidays were always about friends because I'm Jewish. I didn't get to celebrate Christmas in the way that, you know, Christian people do. Um, and so I would always kind of do this with my friends. And it just, um, I just love my friends so much. And I can, I, I, I can lean on them in ways that I can't lean on my family and stuff like that. So I, to me, it's like a kind of a, a love letter to friendship in a way. Aw. I, I, I feel like sweet. that's something that I think a lot of people do is, is your Christmas growing up is always with your family, but it gets to a point where even if it's not actually Christmas, you do something with your friends and yeah. it becomes a, a new tradition. And it becomes a ritual and it's a way to kind of mark time. And it's, and it's, but it's also something that as everyone gets older is harder and harder to make time to do. Um, and that's kind of the thing the guys in the movie are grappling with. Yeah, there's and also the, the sweaters, the sweaters. Yeah, there's some sweaters in this movie that are just was amazing. Anthony Mackie gung ho about the black Santa sweater because he makes a joke about I it. I think at he one looked point. at it and he was like, "All right." <laughs> 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 like Mackie will do anything, so yeah. um, and it's you know, and he trusted us, and hopefully it, it, his trust wasn't. <laughs> I, I think this movie proves that Mackie will do anything. Yeah, there's yeah. a couple of scenes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, like that was like, the, are you telling you the scene where he and Ilana are in the that that one? Like, yeah, they're in the bathroom. Are in the bathroom. Yeah. That was like, they would do anything. I'll bet that they was like would. Great. Yeah. They would do absolutely anything, and you know, I it's I, it's kind of amazing as a director 
there are certain actors who you just kind of ask them to do something and they just say yes, and they're so wonderful to work with. Um, and he's just so brave in that way. He'll just do whatever. He's he's incredible. I bet you have a lot of material like left over. Oh yeah. In this movie. Yeah. Like One of hours. the I was, <laughs> I was thinking because that character Alana who shows up and she's I, I don't want to ruin it, but she's basically the almost the villain in some ways. Yeah, but yeah. Not really. Right. She's um, great. She's so great. But she she's I don't know. I thought I thought maybe there might be more of her. Is there like some big ending or something like that that maybe got cut? There or? I think there there was there was a scene with her that probably that wrapped her up that did get cut with her and Michael Shannon in the North Pole. <laughs> um, and We're it was laughing. Just, Watch it. You'll yeah, understand. You'll and it was just like we 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 watched it like like we watched it with that and with an audience. I think we tested it with an audience, and they were just like, you know, it's a very fine line with a movie like this. Like yeah. we're going from kind of drama to magical realism to broad comedy, and it's very very tough to navigate. And if you make kind of one step in the wrong direction, the audience will will hate you. And that was one. <laughs> <laughs> that the audience didn't like. Let me ask you something. I really want to see it. Is, is, <laughs> it a, is it a litmus test in a Christmas movie? Like the whole idea is that you want to make a movie people will watch literally every year. Is that, in, is that on your mind? It is on your mind, but at the same time, the bar for that is pretty low. Really? Like, yeah, dude. Look at in a week. Start start scrolling through your cable guide. <laughs> oh, I've been watching Hallmark Christmas. I've been rehabilitating like, myself by watching Hallmark Christmas movies. No, he really 24 does. 7 <laughs> Marathon from like the Halloween to Christmas. Well, I hope we I hope we exceed that very low bar. <laughs> and um, no, I mean it is. I think that what the what the the thing we wanted for it was that it was like a Christmas movie for for our generation. Yeah. Um, and we you know hope in some small way that it'll be part of people's holiday tradition and yeah. whatever. But um, you know it can't be on network television ever. I think it would no. be like the network television oh, no. version of it would be like seven minutes long. I'm almost so. excited to see what the network television version would yeah. be like. Yeah, it would probably be pretty like surreal. It might be like an art film. <laughs> it would just be like no dialogue. That's how it's and, come. Yeah, That's... yeah. Um, but yes, we we definitely um, we definitely want people to watch it around the holidays. That's why we love holiday movies. We yeah. we love when they come on TV around the holidays. And what do you watch every year? I watch when Harry met Sally. That's always Aww. on around the, the holidays. That's like one of my favorite movies. Um, I watch The Apartment. Great oh. pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I watch Love Actually, which is not as good as The Apartment, but <laughs> but still good. I watch it every year. Yeah, it's great. A, you know, some of the plot lines are better than others. Oh yeah, not not all of them are good, but I can't help but watch the president, every year. the prime minister one is yeah. kind of whack. Yeah. I like. I always like whenever I watch that movie, I do like an over under on like which one of these people are actually going to be around next year and still in a relationship. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's my. I kind of want the sequel, and it's just half of them are miserable, and half of them are really. But still that's happy. like the cool thing about Love Actually, and that's the cool thing about Christmas movies is Love Actually has that really sad one with Alan Rickman. Yeah. Yeah. And like you can do it, and the audience is just like you can do kind of crazy tonal shifts in a holiday movie and because the holidays are such a time of like reflection and existential thought yeah you can get away with that shit and then you can have you know seth uh you know doing every drug under the sun <laughs> in the same movie that you can have joe and lizzie having like kind of a grounded relationship oh and the and the, the beard the beard the beard long beard thing oh, the long i don't know what that's thing. called my mom I don't wanted know, me but to it's do wonderful. that for years no why did your mom want you to do that? i don't know my mom my mom wanted me to get dreadlocks for forever and i was just like no. I kind of want to meet your mom now. Yeah, what's what's, 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 what's like the story mom, there? My mom, I don't know. My, mom is, my, mom is not, my mom's whack. What, what do you guys watch every year? I watch, I mean, the, the super obscure one is uh, my favorite is a TV episode. It's an episode of Space Above and Beyond. That's <laughs> it's awful. my favorite Christmas episode. <laughs> uh, but uh, movie-wise, uh, my two big choices, and pretty much because of my parents, uh, my dad, the Thin Man. Uh, oh, it's wow. it's pretty much his favorite movie. movie. Yeah. yeah, that's a great movie. And uh, my mom, weirdly, the remake that Arnold Schwarzenegger directed of Christmas in Connecticut. She, she just always the puts it. Remake. My little brother grew up loving Chris Christopherson. So, like, when she bakes Christmas cookies, she puts on Chris Christopherson movies. And because that's a Christmas Chris Christopherson movie, that's that's doubly that's good. That's great. What's, I, sur what's surreal is that my go-to every year is Christmas in Connecticut, the original Christmas in Connecticut really? with Barbara Stanwyck. That, that's not, un until they until Barbara Stanwyck and that hunky young sailor like walk the cow, like it's not Christmas for me. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. um, Holiday Inn, which is really old, yeah, but of yeah. course Nightmare Before Christmas, which I also watch at sure, Halloween. Sure, sure. And, um, and, you know, the Home Alone movies, of course. Yeah, yeah. And uh, A Christmas Story. A there Christmas you know. story. Christmas story. There's also, I mean, Die Hard is a great Christmas movie, and any Shane Black movie is a yeah. Christmas movie. <laughs> I know. Yeah. They're all I always assume Predator takes place on Christmas. <laughs> yeah. It might, yeah. yeah. It could. Yeah. 
Yeah. You don't know. They wouldn't be really be celebrating. <laughs> there's, a, there's an amazing movie that I don't think even think it's on home video, but Turner Classic Movies plays it every year, written by Rod Sterling, called Carol for Another Christmas. Okay. Which is uh, Sterling Hayden. Uh, basically, he's like this big politician, and he's trying to keep America out of every foreign affair because he's terrified it's going to like come back and destroy our country. And it's just all of the ghosts are trying to get him to actually, like, no, take in the Syrian refugees. So I really hope people watch it this year, because wow. it's a really incredible motion picture. And like Peter Sellers is in it. Like No one talks about it. It's insane. What a turn. Yeah. What a turn in the conversation. You're that welcome. Just happened. Yeah. I, that's that's, that's <laughs> like, some serious shit. Before yeah. we wrap up, we should talk about there's a couple of things that have been in the news, um, like the remake of Memento. That seems yeah, like a backwards idea. The only yes. thing more fun than solving a puzzle is solving the same puzzle twice. Well, it's, it's bizarre. Even in the press release, it said, like, the reason we're remaking it is because everybody who sees it loves it and they want to watch it again. And it's like, just yeah. watch it again. I, because I have it on Blu-ray. Yeah. Like, I can do that. Well, I think, the thing is, I think the thing you have to remember is that that press release uh, is actually not designed for fans. A lot of press releases aren't designed for fans of the movie. They're designed for investors. Look right. at our new company. We have the rights to Memento. People are going to talk about this movie, even if they don't like it. Here's this movie Memento we're doing. It's getting all this buzz all over the internet. It doesn't even matter if it's good anymore. You got your buzz. It's not. What does yeah. Chris Nolan think about this? I don't know if they've actually talked to him yet. I imagine he's probably not terribly happy. Yeah. I, I don't know. A part of me would rather see like a crappy straight to video sequel that had nothing to do with Memento yeah, yeah, that they yeah. tacked, like Memento colon the hard way or something, you know? Like, like that second Donnie Darko. I never yeah. saw that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. S Darko. Yeah. yeah. S Darko. S Memento. Honestly, yeah. I feel like even, even following would be a cool remake just because there's yeah. those rules in place. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I don't. Well, it's only a matter of time. I mean, if you think about it, like Inception's going to get remade in 20 years, whether you like it or not. But it hasn't it hasn't been that long. I honestly would love to see other films in the Inception universe. Like, I like the idea of there are these architects for hire that build dreams, and like we saw a heist basically. But what else do they do? A Christmas movie. <laughs> That'd be cool. A Christmas yeah. dream Inception heist for another movie. Christmas. That'd be cool. Joe could do that. Joe's Joe's. In it You're right. Yeah. You should tell him about that. I should tell him about that. Yeah. <laughs> Night thank before you Inception. For Joe, I have a horrible <laughs> idea for you. <laughs> <laughs> now we also have um, Val Kilmer, who is talking about Top Gun 2, who sort of said he was doing it and then kind of in the same post on Facebook said he, he isn't or is not sure if he is. They're or... talking about it and it sounds like he got too excited and announced it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think this might be one of those things where, listen, I love Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer's a badass. Well, yeah. Um, but his, he's, he's not like the A-level star he was in like the 90s, so of course he wants to do Top Gun 2. Who wouldn't? I you know, actually, like, I everything they've said about Top Gun 2, yeah. I think sounds really cool. Yeah. And, and, and if you're going to do it, you got to have Val Kilmer. I want to do just do Top Gun, but they're all, they all, they all uh, pilot drones. That's what it's about. That's, oh, that's it really? what they've said. Yeah, it's sort okay. of about the idea of the, what was the ideal in Top Gun doesn't exist anymore. And so Tom Cruise's character is sort of training drone pilots. So it's literally just Andrew Nichols' is A Good Kill <laughs> with Ethan Hawke, which no one saw but was actually... Just put the volleyball scene in. I'm fine. That's fine. That's all that movie. You had a volleyball scene to that Ethan Hawke. I don't know how, how good Val Kilmer's going to be at volleyball. Oh, it doesn't have to be the, those guys. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you want to see Val Kilmer on the beach. No. Val no. Kilmer no. judges the volleyball. Yeah. He's like on yeah, like yeah. a perch. He's he sitting can on judge the side, the you know? There you go. It's nothing to do with planes. It's just about a volleyball he, like, tournament. He just takes off his <laughs> shirt cool and a CGI hunky body now. Like, they don't even hide it. It's just really obvious. You know? It's not even like the right skin tone. <laughs> Val Kilmer also in a great Christmas movie, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Oh, yeah. Damn right. Damn right. Maybe his last great role. For Except now. this, for now, yeah. For now. Except for Top Gun 2. Yeah. Never rule it out. He's Quentin Tarantino will write something for him. We'll get an Oscar. All He's funny. Day. Val Kilmer's funny. He yeah. is a funny man. <laughs> all right, everybody, most craved. Uh, so the night before is open now by the time uh, this episode comes out. And you should see it because it's totally funny should. and Christmas. I, I, I really, really loved I it. Loved I loved it. I, <laughs> I have friends that uh, I, I see every year on Christmas that I'm excited to go see it with. Oh, that's um, great. Aww. That's great. That's very sweet. Thank Fantastic, you. Man. Thank you, guys. And thanks for having me. This thanks for fun. coming. Thanks for coming. This is awesome. Awesome. So, everybody, uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Most Crave. It's around here on the screen somewhere. And uh, we'll see you next week for more stuff.